Hey, Harry. Um, just kind of you know, evaluate yourself through these first two games as a starter and just how much did, you know, the amount of reps you were able to get last year because of the amount of blowouts maybe kind of speed yeah. up your defending. Yeah, those were um, the reps last year, I think, essential to um, being able to contribute this year. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really what was really fun was just being able to also progress between week one and week two. And of course, having the company of um, Josh, Wyatt, Thayer, and Nick are uh, is, is fantastic company to keep. Um, and they helped me progress. And of course, um, our unit is filled with great guys that, that encourage progress. But definitely, like the reps I got last year were so helpful and just kind of um, getting used to tempo. Of course, it was later in the game when we had leads, but it was very essential to be able to kind of understand how a game functions um, at Ohio State versus in high school. And just a quick follow up um, Are you still taking second team reps at center at all? Yeah, so I, I, I um, in regards to practice, I usually practice at just left guard. Okay. Um, but I always, we have a great, like, again, our underclassmen this year as well are fantastic. And, um, but I get, I snap often just so I'm always ready and reserved if anything happens. Um, but of course, between center and guard, it's a, it's a quick switch. Of course, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve between, but it's always uh, capable to do both. Thanks. All righty. Next up, we'll go to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Harry, how did you, uh, when you were making the switch to guard, who, who did you kind of lean on for advice and who helped you kind of the most the transition? Yeah, I would say um, while at Ohio State, Wyatt Davis, um, Wyatt was an immense help and sort of a, a guy to lean on during the off season um, in regards to technical, technical questions and um, sort of understanding the game from that position, but also watching Jonah Jackson for a full year. Um, I, there's possibly no better person to watch um, than Jonah as well, because he was so incredible, great leader, great dude. Um, he's doing fantastic at Detroit now. So there's really, there was no two better guys to learn from than um, Jonah and Wyatt. And so I was really grateful and thankful for that. All right, next, <clears throat> next we'll go to Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Austin. Harry, you said you got better from week one to week two. We know you graded a champion this week. Where did you see uh, that improvement? I think, um, it's funny because I was talking with Coach Wilson after the game um, and he was asking how I thought I played. And I said, you know, really um, playing against Penn State, it was kind of like the first time I felt like I was I was playing football rather than like doing assignments or thinking too much. It felt like I was playing football and um, that lets you loosen up and make plays. And of course, for me, sometimes um, it's easy to get in your head and it's easy to, to lose yourself in situations, scenarios, predictions, estimations and instead of just playing football. And when it comes down to it, football it just comes down to um, hit a guy, try not to get hit too hard yourself and, and keep your composure and um, don't complicate it too much, just play ball. And so I think that was kind of it. And again, learning behind um, the line we had last year and with the guys we have this year, um, they kind of gave me the foundation to be able to just um, play football and not, and not overcomplicate it. All right, next up um, is Patrick Murphy, 247 Sports. Patrick. Hey, Harry, are you familiar with the guard center, center guard transitions of Ohio State in the past? Billy Price, Pat Elfline, those guys? Yeah, I, those got like, yeah. So, like, in coming here, it was especially advertised to me, um, center. But of course, understanding um, how Billy operated, how Josh operated, how you know, Pat, Michael Jordan, all those guys were sort of operating um, throughout the interior. And so that was something that um, I was well prepared for and I, and I understood. Um, and of course, it's just an opportunity to be able to, to play football with good dudes, um, regardless of position. So, um, yeah, but I was definitely aware of, of the guys before me and their sort of route. All righty, we'll go next to Andy Anders from Press Pros. Andy. Uh, yes, uh, you've talked a little bit already about how you improved week one, week two, but looking at the line as a whole, it seemed like you guys were able to get a little more movement off the ball in the running game against Penn State. Can you talk about how you guys as a unit have gelled from week one to week two, knocking that rust off? Absolutely. Well, I think that's, you know, that's what it comes down to is, um, is, is reps. And, and Coach Day talked about how, you know, you don't really know what sort of team you have until you have that first game. And of course, for us, 
Um, it was a first game against a great opponent where we were directly into conference. And so um, I know for me especially, and I, and I don't want to speak for the other guys, but for me especially, um, especially um, significantly playing this time rather than just coming in the fourth quarter, um, I had to really get my sort of sea legs. Um, and so I think that was just sort of like the natural progression and uh, just building confidence, building um, sort of your, your getting your feet in the ground and, and, and being able to work with that. I just think that naturally happened between week one and week two. We'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Harry. I wanted to ask you, you seemed like you had a lot of fun uh, this off season with uh, playing music and, and doing stuff on social media. Just kind of what inspired you to do all of that? Um, I don't know. I know um, for me, like I took – a big resolution to read more during quarantine. And so like yesterday we had a day off and I don't want to talk about perhaps non-football stuff in a football environment, but um, I really wanted to expand in this off season. I wanted to expand my understanding of things outside of football because I'm passionate. I want to, I have various dreams of, you know, owning a bookstore, sailing across the Atlantic ocean, uh, doing stuff and, and traveling. Um, and so that was kind of a, uh, and luckily, social media, um, though it can be the sort of uh, a bane towards um, sincerity and a bane towards authenticity, um, I wanted to use it as um, a very natural sort of um, uh, natural sort of platform and a natural sort of like a town square of just uh, you know you can't really I can't really go out and busk on a street corner and play music for you know pennies and dimes, but I can kind of go on Twitter and. Um, screw around and some people like it. So um, it was, it was really fun. It was, I was really happy to do it and I was glad that people um, liked it too. Have you been trying to uh, encourage the other guys to read more with you? Absolutely. I've been hoping I, I, I want to start um, a sort of, of a sort of book club and, and hopefully that can become a sort of thing and uh, share ideas with people. I just read, I read the bag of that beauty yesterday, which is a uh, central text in uh, Eastern philosophy and Hinduism. And I was looking for, I was like, there's nobody to talk to that I know around here. Um, and so I was kind of asking people I've met through engineering, you know, what their thoughts were, but um, I've been, I've always been looking for people to talk with ideas with. Thanks, Harry. All righty. We'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Yeah, Harry. Yeah, Harry. First of all, I'm jealous of you as a guitarist because you're much better. Um, secondly, where does this kind of renaissance man kind of stuff come from? Is that, does that come from your parents or your, uh, you know, what, what is it about your upbringing or, or you that's caused that? I don't know. I know um, my mother did a great job of raising me. My dad did a great job of um, getting me into music. And then I had such fantastic teachers to get me into literature. And so that kind of molds all these things, but you spend, you know, I spent my childhood reading about um, great thinkers and great men. And it sort of, I think, um, becomes exponential when you, you read about um, musketeers and you read about great men, a 19 year old who, who fought uh, in, in, in France and he fought in England. And then you read about um, Jim Hawkins going to Treasure Island and you read about um, Ishmael and Captain Ahab. Uh, looking for Moby Dick and you read things about great men who are well versed in the world and know many things and you become sort of jealous. Um, I've, I've done a little bit of traveling, but of course I haven't, um, you know, sailed and gone whale hunting and I haven't um, been a musketeer in France, but you read great men and, and books make you hold the company of great men and great thinkers and you have very intimate conversations with the greatest thinkers of, of human history and it sort of warrants you to check yourself and to improve yourself. And it kind of just makes you very hungry and very anxious to learn more things because, um, you know, you read the feats and you read the words of great thinkers and you think, what have I done? And it makes you want to be able to share such company as that. And so I think it's very natural that as you, as you look for more, you realize you need to find more and um, it sort of never stops. So that's sort of the boat I find myself in. All right, we'll go next to Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Harry. I, I really don't know how to follow some of that. Um, but I wanted to ask about uh, Nicholas Petit-Frere. We were talking to Kevin Wilson yesterday, and he was talking about how there's kind of a, a different 
sort of glimmer in his eye this year from a competitive standpoint. Um, what have you noticed just about what he's bringing to the field this season? Absolutely. I, I love Nick. And of course, it's always very hard. Um, Nick and I were both second team guys, and it's hard to have, it's hard to sort of establish a swagger and a confidence, understanding that, you know, you have a role as a second team guy to support the guys in front of you. And so you're not, you're not the guy, you're a guy supporting the guys. And so I think Nick stepped into the new role fabulously and um, he's fantastic. And I, and I love him and he does such a great job. And um, I think he's so, he's not, you know, loud and he's not uh, crass. He's, he's very calm and he's, and he's very, um, he's just great company to have and a great man to have on the line, but I totally see the, the confidence that he has. And it's, um, it's very uh, like charming and reassuring to see that in him. All right, we'll go next to uh, Tim May from Letterman Row. Tim. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, I don't know where to start here or end, but uh, I was just wondering, uh, uh, Harry, uh, have you found people or some people or maybe one person on the team, maybe who's not as learned or as well-read as you are, but you consider to be a deep thinker, you know, in that regard? I mean, have you run into, into anybody like that that uh, can share sort of your thoughts? I think strongly. Um, Tommy Eichenberg went with me to Nicaragua this year. Um, and we shared some, and of course, you were in Nicaragua when um, Ohio, the season was, the spring season was getting canceled. Ohio State was getting moved to online. Airports were possibly closing. And so hmm. we were down there and we shared some very intimate moments. Um, but to see him and Tommy as well as an incredibly quiet dude, um, and many people think that he doesn't have a lot to say, but I think he's incredibly um, profound. And I think that he's, um, I always think of a little phrase where um, a wise man said nothing at all. And, um, you know, a fool is remembered for what he says, a wise man for what he does not say. And I think Tommy is full of no words that mean very much. And I think that um, his character and he, he is, I just think he's a profound character um, and one of my greatest friends that I can always lean on. And do you feel like you're well situated to take advantage of the name, image, and likeness uh, thing if it ever comes about with the NCAA possibly next year? I hope so. I'm ho I hope I can get sponsored by Half Price Books or something or some sort of uh, <laughs> something like that. That'd be nice. Yeah. Thanks, man. Alrighty. And the last uh, questioner for Harry will be um, Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Harry, you talked, it sounds like the, the second game things have slowed down for you. Were you surprised at Maybe how fast things were in that first game? Yeah, absolutely. I felt my – I was like it, – it's and again, it's so different because it's – even just on game day itself, um, last year it's like you do the warm-up and then you go on the sideline and you, the game unfolds before you and, um, you know, the, the starters loosen up the defense and, the, and you, you know, you work – they work through all the, all the tough stuff and then you can come in later and sort of relieve everybody. But it's, it's very different to go in when – it's the first game of a season that potentially wasn't going to happen. Lots of energy. Um, and, and this is your first sort of rodeo. Um, and so it was very different, but um, luckily again, surrounded by great, great guys, you sort of um, feel yourself naturally having to keep up the pace. Um, and again, naturally, I think just with more reps, you build more confidence and, um, but definitely it was, it was a new, ex it was my first experience really uh, starting um, a collegiate game. And so it was something that I had to learn and learn quickly, naturally in such an environment. Um, but definitely it was, it was very, it was a very new experience, but very grateful to have it. 